Hello friends, it is I, Chris, and welcome once again to CrossChop. Today we're going to do something a little new, a little different, and that's going to be an episode of CrossChop Reads, in which I'll have chosen a selected reading and will dramatically read it to you. The piece that I'm reading to you today comes from my seventh grade journal. I kid you not, this was written when I was in middle school, and it's dated April 27th, 2002. Thus, it was penned shortly after the release of the Nintendo GameCube and the release of Super Smash Bros. Melee on the GameCube. As you might have guessed, this gets a little silly. It came from, again, my seventh grade mind, and it's fan fiction, essentially, on the Super Smash Bros. video game series. So. I won't spoil too much for you here, and we'll just go ahead and dive right into it. Allow me to put on my special reading glasses here, and let's see what this story contains. There once was a man named Mario. He had been on many adventures with his friends. He was glad, though, that he was finally able to rest a while. After all, chasing after Bowser got to be pretty tiring. He was outside on his lawn, looking at the fire flowers and eating a mushroom. It was such a beautiful day that he fell asleep. When he awoke, it was pitch black, and he was cramped in some, some kind of circular tube. He shimmied up and came outside into the bright sunlight. Oh no, he thought. I must be inside another game. He proceeded forward and came upon some Goombas. Goombas were faithful guards to the Mushroom Kingdom gone bad. They weren't very bright, and all Mario had to do was jump on their heads and flatten them. Suddenly, a small purple and white capsule fell from the sky out of nowhere. He picked it up and threw it at an approaching Koopa paratrooper, which naturally tucked into its shell. The capsule broke and out came a super mushroom. Mario ate this and became supersized. It wore off after a while, of course. Mario kept on going, fighting off more fiends until he reached a kind of plateau where Toad, one of Mario's friends, was running back and forth shouting, Yoshis are everywhere! All of a sudden, Yoshis, large dinosaur creatures, started falling out of the sky. Mario grabbed them and threw them so far they were knocked out. He kept on going until he reached a flag and some checkered tile. As soon as he touched the line, he was transported to the top of Princess Peach's castle. Princess Peach was one of Mario's friends who had been captured many times in the past by Bowser. Bowser is a huge dinosaur turtle with horns and spikes all over him and breathes fire. Anyway, Mario was on a part of the roof of the castle when suddenly Princess Peach and Mario's brother Luigi jumped over the castle's topmost turret. They landed and said, Sorry, Mario, but now we're going to have to beat you up. They jumped again and came at him in attack form. Mario rolled and dodged these. He shot two fireballs, and he hit both of them. Peach countered with a tennis racket, and Luigi shot one of his own fireballs. Mario felt the pain of the racket, then the heat of the fire. Just as they were about to hit him again, he ducked, and they went over him. He kicked back as hard as he could. His feet connected and hit Luigi in the backside. Luigi's stunned body hit Peach, and they both hit the high turret of the castle. They ricocheted and went flying. They recovered just as they were going over the edge of the castle and jumped in midair back onto the edge. Bruised and battered, they walked back up to Mario and said, Sorry, but now it's our turn. Interesting how they say sorry for everything. It was a face-off. Everything was tense. Suddenly, Luigi jumped sideways with his head outstretched straight at Mario, and Peach reared back a golf club. Mario focused his energy into the heel of his hand and released it. It was devastating. <gasps> Mario hardly even saw them fly. They got hit so far that he couldn't even see them in the distance. Mario traveled great distances and for a long time. He went to places like Planet Zebes, Corneria, Congo Jungle, and Onet. He fought many people throughout the history of Nintendo, like Ness, Captain Falcon, and Link. After a long time, he got to his final destination. It was a floating platform in outer space. When he got there, Bowser, extra large, was there too. 
Die, Mario! roared Bowser, and he charged. Mario sidestepped, and Bowser fell to his doom. Mario woke up, and it was evening outside. So it was a dream.